Critical Reading, the second video. In our first video, we reviewed the fact that the word critical has several different meanings. And this is one we often think of, but in critical reading, this is the definition that's important to us. In this video, I want to give you three examples of different writing styles. First example is fiction. It's actually a fable, a traditional writing style. Pause the video and read. Now, we know that to read critically means to check in with yourself. Do I trust it? What does this writing want from me? How do I feel about it? Well, this is fiction. These questions, well, do I trust it? Well, this is fiction. It's imagination. I'm not concerned with trust. What does it want from me? Well, fiction has the purpose to entertain. So it really doesn't want anything from me, just that I accept it. How does it make me feel? Well, that's my emotional reaction to fiction. Those questions are not as useful. Instead, I will ask, how does the structure, the way this is written, affect the meaning? And of course, what does it mean? Symbols will be important, so I'll want to figure out what are the symbols? What do they mean? Let's try that with this paragraph. I know this is a fable. A fable is a specific kind of folk tale. I recognize there are talking animals and there seems to be a lesson. Okay, the structure is a fable. What is the key to a fable? It always has a lesson, a moral. What is the lesson here? Well, one reader might read this and say, ah, wolves. There's a wolf. I don't like wolves. Wolves are scary. Wolves are stupid animals. This wolf represents a stupid person who doesn't understand metaphors. A very literal minded person. So the moral of the story is do not be literal minded. Go beyond the surface of the words to find the meaning underneath. Understand that context matters. So the moral of the story is don't believe everything you hear. That's a pretty good lesson. However, a different reader might start with the opinion that they agree with the wolf. Hey, this mother said one thing and just a minute later, she completely changed her mind. So the moral of the story could be don't trust people who change their minds easily. Which moral is correct? There is no single right answer. Both of those could work. Both of those answers seem to match the paragraph. Now let's try a different type of paragraph. This is an advertisement for, some, for a product. Pause and read. Okay, so we know that it's an advertisement. Let me ask those questions. Do I trust it? Well, I don't really trust it. What does this writing want from me? I know that it wants to sell me something. It wants me to purchase this product. It wants me to buy tape. And I read these very strong emotional words and I think it's strange to have such powerful emotion about a piece of tape. So I don't trust it. I recognize that it wants me to do something. But my last question is, how do I feel and you know what's interesting? I feel great. I feel excited. I really want this tape. I, I love the energy. I love the excitement. So I do have a positive emotion. And I have to recognize that's what makes it an effective ad. It has given me a positive feeling, even though I recognize it just wants my money. Are you ready for a final example? Well, this paragraph was not originally written. It was spoken. And it is not fiction or nonfiction. It's a special type of writing called opinion. Skimming it quickly, I see some very powerful adjectives. And these are negative adjectives. There's some Im negative emotion. I'll ask my questions. Trust. 
I'm not sure that I trust it. What does it want from me? It wants to affect my thinking. It wants me to believe this, these claims, that there was cheating, that all these people were bad, that something was unfair. It wants to make me feel bad. It wants to maybe make me feel sad or feel angry. Third question, how do I actually feel about it? Well, critical thinking includes thinking about the structure itself. Now, the structure is very repetitive, and the vocabulary is very, very simple. I also see some very general claims, as everybody saw, everybody knew. This is the structure that a child would use. The language is language that a child would use. But these are not the words of a child. They are the words of a very powerful world leader. That seems like a conflict. And it's critical reading skills that let me analyze that, let me see and name what there is about this piece of writing that might make me uncomfortable. I hope this is helpful. You have seen how critical reading skills can be used for fiction, for advertising, or persuasive writing, and for opinion pieces as well. Thank you.